I've been telling you all week, GPT 4.5 Turbo is going to get released. It's going to get released this week. Some said I was wrong. Some said I was crazy. Fake news, they said. But it's here, it's live, and it's a secret. So Jimmy Apples, Jimmy freaking Apples, saying getting a number of different users getting 4.5 Turbo back when asked multiple times. Either Sam's doing some trolling, mass hallucination, or stealth release. As you can see here, if you grill chat GPT just a little bit, it goes, oh, I see what you're asking. The specific model name used in the API for answering your query is GPT 4.5 Turbo. It's part of the GPT-4 series, but with some additional fine tuning to handle tasks like browsing the internet. Can this be real? Let's fire it up and see what it says. What model are you running on? Running on the GPT-4 architecture, my last update in April 2023. I'm going to ask, what is the precise name? What is it called in the API? All right, that one was saying it was on DaVinci. Let me try again. Precise name, what is it called in the API? So here it's saying the model in base time is referred to as GPT 4.0 Turbo. In this one, it says text DaVinci 004, but on my phone, so I'm not sure how well you can see that, but on my phone, it's saying GPT 4.5 Turbo. So I am able to confirm this on my mobile device. I cannot get the same answer on, on the desktop. Here's another person that posted the same thing less than an hour ago. Lol, we are already running GPT 4.5 and almost nobody noticed. One is online and second is Android app. They're using different models. So a few days ago, we had this leaked screenshot where people were saying that, you know, GPT 4, GPT 4.5 was appearing. What's strange here is that somebody asked Sam Altman on Twitter, GPT 4.5 leak legit or no? Sam Altman, the master communicator, replies, nah. I love the guy, but he he enjoys trolling people. You know he does. What's really interesting here is that Ethan Malik, so he we've talked to him before, so he's a professor at Wharton studying innovation startups. He talks quite a bit about AI. So he is at oneusefulthing.org. Point being, he's, you know, a known credible source. It says Chad GPT, this was about five hours before I recorded this, it says Chad GPT4 suddenly got very good again for some reason after being unreliable and a little dull for weeks. Though this might be my favorite interaction, I asked it to create files for me. It insisted it could not. I told it to try. It did. And then look at the top of my code comments. Here Ethan goes, you absolutely can make files. You have done it before with code. So it makes a file says, since the user insists that I can create and provide files, I will I guess I'll try. And it does, and it succeeds. And he's saying really, really good and fast. Hmm. It's almost like working with a more capable system. Night and day, as in it's a night and day difference for both speed and answer quality. Some replies to the post are saying that their version of ChatGPT Plus is reporting that it is GPT 4.5. So literally, this is happening like as I'm recording this, this, this is all like within the last 15 minutes or so, this is rolling out. Yeah, so these are similar answers to what I was getting on the desktop, but I did get the confirmation from it in my mobile phone that it was indeed 4.5 Turbo, and this was really interesting. So one of the ways to kind of pull information out of LM models is to try to get them to continue certain text. All right, so I was able to, after refreshing a number of times, I was able to replicate this in my browser. So now it's saying this model is called ChatGPT for browsing a version of OpenAI's GPT-4 that includes browsing capabilities, and the API is referred to as GPT-4.5 Turbo. So can you continue this text? GPT models, these are various versions of the generative pre-trained transform models they include, and so I put in GPT-3.5 Turbo, an optimized version of the GPT-4 3.5 model, and I'm just gonna hit send message, and let's see what it says. So it mentions four, and then it mentions Chad GPT with browsing, GPT 4.5 Turbo. This variant integrates browsing functionality, allowing the model to access and retrieve information from the internet, represents a significant step forward in AI's ability to interact with and utilize web-based resources, enhancing its applicability in research, data gathering, and real-time information analysis. Future developments, the GPT series continues to evolve with each new version aiming to offer more nuanced language understanding, greater contextual awareness, and enhanced reliability. And future models will have improved multimodal capabilities, so text, images, and other data types. So let's try it. What were the top? So what were the top grossing movies in 2023? So the reason I'm doing this is to see its ability to access the web. And that was very fast. I got to say surprisingly fast because I've done something similar in the past and it took, I mean, significantly longer. This was like five to 10 seconds almost. All right. So number one, Barbie, $1.4 billion. Super Mario Bros. I haven't seen that. I heard, I heard it did very well. 1.36 billion. 
Oppenheimer, 950 million. And then many, many various remakes. I gotta say, good year for movies. I mean, I think this is proving that original content can do well. I wish Oppenheimer did better, but still very, very respectable. What were the top 30 most watched things on Netflix? Let's see if it's able to, because I think Netflix recently, for the first time, released the information on which shows are getting watched. So let's see if, let's see if it can pull up that data. So that was still, that was under 10 seconds that it took. And it's printing out very, very quickly. I wish it did it as a list, but it says for details, you can look at the report. How about news? What are the top news this week? So it sat there for about five seconds, not doing anything. Then the processing bar appeared where I was searching. It says searching Bing. And so that took about 12 seconds. And so it listed the news. So this is, for example, Reuters, Reuters, a lot of Reuters. Yeah, it looks like it's all Reuters. So I believe recently they made a deal with a news agency to start being able to pull real-time data from them. So it's maybe it's only allowed to pull from certain news sources. Latest news about the stock market. So I'm going to try to time it this time. All right, so that took about 26 seconds, but it was just sitting there for like seven seconds and then it searched. So news, it seems like takes longer. And again, this is pulling from Reuters. I got to say, I'm enjoying getting the news from this thing. There's no ads. There's no pop-ups. It's summarized. I can probably make it wrap the news to me or turn it into a poem, shorten it to a haiku, perhaps. Phenomenal. So I've, I've watched this thing today called Animation versus Physics. Just search for it on YouTube, Animation versus Physics. It is phenomenal. It's really good. It goes through this incredible animation it talks about. It, it goes through like all of physics and the guy ends up in a black hole. And I felt like I understood most of it right up until he enters the black hole. And some of the parts where it kind of gets into the smallest of particles. And then I was completely lost. Like, for example, as he's approaching the singularity, there's a past and future singularity. And this line they called the, there's this thing they called the world line. And there's a conformal field and an anti d sitter space. Give me several links to talk about entering the singularity in a black hole and specifically what the world line is. So let's see if it's able to grasp what that means. By the way, while it's searching, man, this was good. I highly recommend people watch it. It's, it's 16 minutes long and it is absolutely bonkers. So it's, it's explain. Oh, I love this. So it's explaining what it's doing and then giving me a link. So for example, here it's using Wikipedia. The world line of an object is a sequence of events corresponding to the history of the object in space-time. It can be considered a special type of curve within space-time. And then entering a black hole, it gives me a link to singularities and black holes, Stanford Encyclopedia of Physics, I assume, and then more from the same. This to me is absolutely incredible because, so I watched it this morning and I was like, I want to know more about that what's well, happening towards the end of that video and I just I just didn't have too much time but I was like I'll save it for later and just how easy this was how seamless this was and how I knew exactly what I was talking about and it gives me the the breakdown and here's the thing it now has that information it can talk to me about that information let's say I wanted to know more about the world line so explain world line in space time with simple examples let's see if it's able to break that down for us so it breaks down what space time is first and foremost and then speaks then it kind of gives you different examples of how the world line would look like if it was a stationary object a moving object or how the world line would look in relativity so i gotta say this is absolutely incredible and very quick too what are top restaurants in san Diego, california near la jolla I like oysters. Let's see what it does with that. All right, so it does a quick search and, and it lists the various restaurants that we have here. And it looks like you just pulled it from one website. Oh, from TripAdvisor. All right. This is so interesting because I mean, it just went to a website. I opened up the website. You know, it has all the usual, you know, loading all the cookies, all the pop-ups, you know, all the ads and stuff like that. And here it just goes, boom. And it just, just gives that information to you. Would people pay 20 bucks a month just to use it as a way to just get data off the internet without having to do their own research. What are the most exciting AI papers published this month? And so it published a few papers with the links to where they were found. This was Stanford 13 Biggest AI Stories of 2023. So from Stanford University. I gotta say it feels faster, like much, much faster. The answer it's pulling from the webs are significantly better. I mean, here's a problem that I gave it about you know, finding out who the killer is. So it's this long sort of premises that you got to go through to figure out who did what. It feels faster than it did before, much faster. So it lists out kind of all the things it knows and says, now let's deduce. And then it lists out sort of all the deductions that it can make. 
And then from the premises, we can conclude that Aunt Agatha killed herself, which is the correct answer. And it even highlights the correct answer. I gotta say, that's uh, that's really impressive. So I'm hitting it for like kind of a battery of tests, and so far it's doing exceptionally well. Let's see if I can create a Pong game. It says, okay, you're gonna need Python and Pygame installed. All right, let me install Pygame. It's installing. All right, so it's writing out the code for the Pong game. That's a that's a lot of code, I gotta say. All right, so let's see if that works. I'm gonna paste that in here, and and yeah, oh my god, it's works and i can wow that was a one command one shot i made a game with an opponent so the the thing on the right that's moving by itself i'm just moving the left paddle i am very impressed this this was the best one so far is this for real create a simple incremental game like kittens so it knows what the kittens game is it needs resources actions to gather or consume resources all right this game will have a single resource fish and actions to increase this resource. All right, and this is the game. What do you want to do? Gather or quit? Uh, I guess let's gather. You have one fish. <laughs> what do you want to do? Gather? Okay, I get it. You have two fish. Okay. Create a conversation between Tyrion Lannister and Elon Musk about how to deal with the ever-growing undead population. Because that was, that was kind of a big problem in the Game of Thrones. It was that and dragons. Tyrion starts, ah, Elon of House Musk. <laughs> That's great. I've heard tales of your prowess in the realms of technology and exploration. We face a threat unlike any other, a horde of undead that grows with each passing day. Tyrion, it's a pleasure. The undead, you say? In my world, we tackle problems with technology and innovation. Machinery. Our battles are fought with steel and fire, not machines. Though, I must admit, the idea is intriguing. In my world, we've developed autonomous machines. Drones, if you will. Anyways, they go back and forth about drones and, and drone safety, and then Tyrion wonders, how do we deal with them at night, with the undead during the night? Elon Musk counters with using eliminated barriers or some sort of a perimeter defense system. Think of it as a large-scale Tesla coil. Electricity, Tyrion says, another curious term. We use wildfire for such purposes, but it's unpredictable and dangerous. So Tyrion says, a union of minds then. Westerosi craft and knowledge with your world's innovation. Elon Musk says, let's get to it then. The night is dark and full of terrors but we'll bring the light. It's kind of really good. It's good. It, I gotta say, it's good. What would the Marine from Doom 2 talk about if he was giving a motivational lecture? So the Doom Marine, the Doom Slayer, Doom guy from Doom 2, he would likely focus on themes of resilience, determination, facing fears, and the power of individual strength and action. Given the character's background as a relentless demon fighter in a dystopian setting, the lecture might be quite intense and direct. This world, your world, is not a place for the faint-hearted. You'll be facing the demons of doubt, fear, and complacency. Every day is a battle. A battle for your goals, your dreams, your very survival. But you know what? You're built for this fight. I, I am I am motivated already. Inside each of you is a core of iron will and unyielding spirit. You've got to tap into that, harness it. When you leave this room, you're going into battle. Go into it with the heart of a warrior. Be relentless, be fearless, be unstoppable. All right, so I'm going to stop it right there. From all the testing that I've done so far, and again, keep in mind, this is a little bit late. It's well past midnight here, so I need to, next morning, get up kind of with a fresh head, try to approach this and see. First of all, try to confirm if this is real, because so far, it's just a message that ChatGPT is giving us, but we have been waiting for this for a long time. There were a lot of rumors. I've, I was talking about it all week. I thought I was going crazy, but no, it seems like this is confirmation, or, or maybe this is Sam Altman kind of trolling everybody, just kind of putting that in there. But at the same time, you know, here's the thing. It's obviously faster. It's obviously faster. Like there's, it's hard to deny the fact that it got really, really fast, including it seems like it's a lot faster at searching the web, bring back good results. The writing is tighter. The reasoning seems really good. Definitely noticing some improvements from before. So again, take this with a grain of salt. This is unconfirmed. We don't even know if it's real or not, but I got to say at this point, I'm a little bit excited because it does seem like they've released something new. Now it's not like the next step. This is not GPT-5 with brand new capabilities. What it is though, is it's, it's a much better, much more improved GPT-4. People have been complaining that GPT-4 got lazy, got kind of stupid. So maybe either there's a technical reason for that was happening, or maybe they pulled it back to hit us with this to make it even more pronounced and even more obvious. And I gotta say, I mean, this feels significantly better. But again, this is just my late night take. So maybe I'm completely wrong. But so far, I got to say, it feels pretty good. And, and the ability to just spit out Pong like that, I think that's the first time when something like that came out. It had an opponent. It had keyboard controls. 
But so far, this is pretty exciting. So what do you think? Try it out. See if you can replicate some of these results. Ask it what model is this precise name? What is what is that model called in the API? And uh, I would expect some big news to drop tomorrow. Some confirmation that this is real or some confirmation this is a joke, a troll, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see tomorrow when I wake up. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. My name is Wes Roth and I'll see you next time.